The Alizan Forest Railway is a narrow gauge railway in Taiwan and it's known for its stunning scenic route through the Alisan mountain range. Originally built for logging purposes in 1912, the railway has since become a popular tourist attraction. One of the highlights is the famous Alisan sunrise where you have to get up pretty early to witness the sunrise from the Alisan mountain peak. And this railway line will take us up to 2451 meters above sea level. So join me on maybe one of the most difficult trains you can book here in Taiwan. We left quite early. She's still doing her makeup and <laughs> I didn't ask her to be in the video. But uh, I'll tell you more about this in the video. For now, just let's roll the intro. Our journey will start in the city of Jai, located on the foot of the Alison mountain range. And for my partner, this was also a great way to see some old friends who picked up our ticket at the railway station. Because for our train, there are no e-tickets. You need to pick up physical tickets from the railway station. And it's always good to know someone who can do this for you. After some reunion and discovering the city of Jai, and obviously visiting the night market, the next morning we moved to the railway station to start our journey along the Addison Forest Railway. I noticed that just outside of the railway station there are some special ticket counters for the Allison Forest Railway, although you can also book your tickets online. And even though our train will depart from Chai Railway Station, this is not the railway station where you will also find the high speed trains. Basically the high speed trains are another system. And if you take the Allison Railway line in account as well, you will find three different railway systems in Taiwan. However, before I show you more of the Addison part of Chai Railway Station, let me tell you something about this Taiwan trip in general. This video is a part of a round trip around Taiwan by train. And Taiwan is an island of contrast, seamlessly blends tradition with innovation. And even though Taiwan is not very big, the diversity is enormous. On the west coast you find many big cities, while in the central and the east coast of the country it's pretty much uninhabited and you find lots of great nature over here. In the modern cities with millions of people, modern skyscrapers share the skyline with ancient temples, reflecting an harmonious coexistence of the past and the present. Within this series we'll be taking all kinds of trains in Taiwan. Some of them are very exceptional, some of them are just regular commuter trains, but mainly we'll be traveling on board of long distance trains. However, we won't be taking the high speed trains you can find in Taiwan, because on the west coast you do find a very good high speed railway network as well. And apart from the trains, we like to show you a little bit more about Taiwan, because my girlfriend is originally from here. So it's a kind of my second home. So join us on this Taiwan trip by train. We're on our way to, to, the, to the train. Um, just a quick interruption, if you like this video or you think this is a helpful video too, please give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more trip reports about more sustainable ways of transportation, hit that subscribe button. And for now, let's go to our train. Just like in many other railway stations, in Jai you also want gates if you want to go to the platforms where you have to well, put your ticket in or your smart card in front of the gates. However, this doesn't work for the Alison Railway, so in this case you just show your tickets and some staff will let you go through. Jai Railway Station will be totally rebuilt right next to the current railway station. However, I think it will take some time before this is totally finished. At this moment, if you go from the main concourse to the platform, you move to the right and you basically continue walking until you find a terminal track and this is where the Alison train departs from. The directions to this spot have been marked crystal clear, you basically can't miss it. Right at the front of the Alison mountain railway line, there is some more information. For example about fares, but also some more background information. Information in English is there, although it's not always that much. We will be taking a train from Jai that goes up on the mountain. Although apart from that train, I also notice there's one train per day that goes from the main railway station of Jai to the railway station of Bayman. 
Bayman is in English just called North Gate Station. For most trains that will go higher up on the mountain, tickets do come including a seat reservation. However, that's definitely not the case for these cute little wooden trains that will just run between Jai and Bayman. And right here, for example, at the number 4 hanging at the platform, you know what carriage of the Alison Railway will be where at the platform. At this platform at the opposite side, you also find the conventional trains, so therefore you find two numbers over here. However, the numbers for the Alison Railway line have been marked crystal clear with also the logo of the Alison train. And even for the train that will only do this small section of the journey, at the side of the train you also find the carriage numbers. Even though we didn't travel with this train that only did this small section of the journey, the interior of this train is actually pretty cute, although I don't think it's super comfortable for longer journeys on these wooden benches, but I like these trains. Anyway, back to the morning when we took our train that will take us a bit higher up on the mountains. Today we'll be traveling to Feng Ho, although our train continues a bit further on. I'll tell you a bit more about this later on in the video. And at the moment everybody takes their camera out, you know the train is coming in. I think this is by far the most photographed train in Taiwan. A diesel powered engine built in 2007 by the Taiwan Rolling Stock Company is pulling in our train for today. These are not the newest trains and as far as I know these trains might retire soon. At the outside of the trains you will find the route information, basically from and to. Something else you will find right next to the entrance doors or the carriage numbers. There is one carriage where you find some extra space for luggage and this wasn't in the carriage where we were sitting. At the total back of the train I also noticed this nursery space for babies and it just looked like they made some extra space over here. Obviously no train tour is complete without doing a toilet review and even though I didn't use a toilet, so I just put my camera in, this is how the toilets are. These are trains are pretty narrow because well, the width of the tracks isn't that wide either. And the leg room is pretty okay. For very sunny days you will find curtains and there are no sunscreens. However this train ride is all about the view so I don't think you would need the curtains. For this specific train ride tickets came including a seat reservation and the seat numbers are located right above the windows and right under the luggage racks. You also find an air conditioning can put towards you and there are very small luggage racks. We were really lucky because the window right next to us could be opened so we could film some great views from the train. Like I already mentioned the train that I showed you at this moment will retire very soon and there will be new trains for this route as well. And this is how the new trains look like. I think they are really great and especially compared what to what we have now. I don't know if the older trains that I showed you in this video will still be running as an addition on the newer trains. However, we are all about to find out because if these newer trains will be in operation and I'm in Taiwan, I'll definitely try to make a trip report on this as well. For now I'll show you the views from the train between Sa'i and Fensiho and while I do this i show you some information about the route written on the screen.
Here, our train is arriving at the railway station of Fancy Hall. In the weekends, there's one train that also has this station as the terminal station. And that's the train you can see here on the left. This is actually the only train you cannot reserve. And some carriages over here do look also slightly different, as you can see here if you look inside the train. I think it can be really busy on this train, so I don't know if I would like to travel on this train. However, like I already mentioned before, lots of things are changing for the Alice on the railway line on the short term, so I don't know what will happen with these trains in the future. Before we continue and discover Fancy Hall, let's take a closer look on the railway map of the Alice on railway line. We started our journey at railway station number 1, what is Chai, and right now we are at railway station number 11, what is Fancy Hall. The train will continue to Zietzilu, what is station number 13. From there on you need to change to a bus to go to Alison and take a bus that goes close to station number 17, what is the main railway station in the Alison recreational area. The section between Xiexielu and Xiamu cannot be used because of landslides. These landslides were caused by typhoons in 2009 and 2015. However, this part will be opened soon as well, and with soon I'm talking about mid-2024, at least that's what they think. And the date of recording and editing this video is the end of 2023 and beginning of 2024. Fancy Ho is worth visiting, although there are some things you need to take in account and I'll tell you this later on in the video. It's a really cute town and right next to the railway station I noticed this depot here on the right. I sneaked in and here I noticed one of the old steam engines that's being kept pretty well, at least from a distance it looks pre kept pretty well. One thing that's very popular here is taking pictures in front of the trains and at the station. By the way, at all railway stations you will have a sign that says how far the next station is and also the previous station and the altitude will be displayed at all stations as well. Fancy Hall is located at around 1400 meters above sea level. At the moment of editing and recording what is once again the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024, you will find two trains only here on weekdays. And in weekends you will find six trains, two trains that continue a bit more up on the mountain, two trains that will go down, one train that terminates here and one train that starts here. The main concourse of the railway station is even with these numbers still pretty big. At the main concourse there are lockers available, but if you want to put your luggage in these lockers, just do this straight away because there are not a lot of these lockers available. Fancy Ho is absolutely famous for its bento boxes and the town itself it looks really nice and cute. However, walking here with my big backpacks, basically one backpack at the front and one at the back, was a little bit challenging because well, you take in a lot of space so I didn't went into the town too much. Therefore, if there are lockers available, just go there straight away. Obviously you're in Taiwan, so over here you also find a convenience store, but right below the 7-Eleven there's another pretty famous spot for bento boxes. The vegetarian selection is rather poor though, but for this trip I just set this part aside and I ate some meat every now and then. After a short visit at the cute town of Fancio, we went to the bus stop. At least this is what we thought we would. Because according to Google Maps, this over here is the bus stop. But this sign here is saying waiting area from Monday to Friday. In English there wasn't any other explanation, but apparently the bus stop in the weekends is a little bit down the road. I can imagine that it's hard to well change the bus stop in the weekends and weekdays in Google Maps for example. But I think if you just change the bus number and make it a different line in the weekend and in weekdays, this is solved in Google Maps easily. And lots of people basically missed the bus because they didn't notice where the right bus stop was. This information was just extremely poor. Apart from that, Fancy Ho is not located on the main road between Alisan and Jai. As you can see over here, it's located at a kind of side road, so the buses need to make a little detour. This basically means that not all buses will go to Fancy Ho. 
However, if we would have just stayed on the train to the final destination, at least what is at this moment the final destination, we could have taken any bus to Alisan. And even though the bus was pretty busy, there was still enough space for everybody. However, the luggage space uh, below the bus is really limited, so I had to put my luggage on my lap. And the reason why the bus stop in the weekend is at a different spot than on weekdays is simply because it's really busy here in the weekends. And over here, the bus can make an easier turn and won't end up in traffic. Even though I'm really happy I visited the town of Fancy Ho, this bus ride well, gave me a little bit bitter feeling about it. Anyway, I didn't film any views from the bus this time because I was basically sitting on the wrong side. But on the way back, I took a seat at the right side and I will show you this later on in the video. On the way back, I was sitting on the best side for the views, so I will show you the views later on. At the moment we left the bus, the bus driver was over handing some cards for discount if you enter the Alison National Park. And that's exactly what we did. We stayed there for two nights. And this over here, this is the Alison Transportation Station. At least they marked it as that. I will show this later on in the video as we go back to Chai. A little walk from here, you find the entrance to the Alison National Forest Recreational Area. So basically, over here, you need to pay the entrance fee for the National Park. Well, once again, we had the discount code and our entrance fee was valid for two days. So we can go in and out anytime we like. And right now, we are in the Alison Recreational Area. Over here, you find quite some hotels, restaurants, touristic facilities. Well, your usual stuff. The numbers of hotels is not that high and basically you might count yourself lucky if you can find a reasonable priced and good hotel over here. And thank goodness we were lucky. Uh, basically we adjusted the schedule of this entire trip around Taiwan based on the availability of the hotels here in Alison. And this here, this is Alison Station, the railway station where this entire railway line has been named after. It is quite big actually. And this railway station is in use. At daytime there are regular trains that will just go up and down in, in this area. They won't go far. And very early in the morning you can take the train for the sunrise. This departs very early and of course it depends on the time of the year what's the departure time. We were in winter so we were lucky on this, it was quite late. At the ground floor, you find a special ticket counter where you can buy the train tickets for the sunrise train. And there's another ticket counter a little bit higher where you can find, well, normal train tickets where you can buy all Alison Railway train tickets. And also buy Alison Railway souvenirs. This is pretty common in Taiwan, I found out, for railway companies. I really like the structure of this railway station. When we were here, the weather was changing rapidly. One moment it was sunny, and the next moment it was cloudy, at least in the valley. After we arrived there, we just wandered a little bit through the town, went to the convenience store to buy some food and drinks, and basically we prepared ourselves for the next day. Welcome to Alison Recreational Forest. We're in the clouds over here. Now the clouds have been gone a little bit, go so fast. Anyway, the train ride was quite okay, but then the bus rides. Uh, was less okay, but it's beautiful over here. Tomorrow morning, but well now we're on Alison Railway Station. Tomorrow morning, from here on, we'll take the train to see the sunrise. I don't think I'll be very tough with that. But what time do you have to take the train? Five thirty. <laughs> so early. Um, I hope we 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 are able to catch that train. Um. And I think right after that we go back and get some more little sleep or we go to sleep really early this morning. Um, we already bought the ticket so we can save some time over here tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, for now I think we continue with this video. But before we do this, if you like this video or it's a helpful video to you, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like to see more, then hit that subscribe button. You can also find me on the socials, they will pop up on the top right of the screen. And for now let's go to tomorrow morning when we take this way too early train. And it was really early, but however we managed to wake up and go to the railway station. 
I haven't seen it that busy as at this moment, I have to say. So, also the ticket counters at the ground floor were open for this situation. Somehow, I guess this is one of the most famous things you can do if you're visiting Taiwan and especially Ali Sun. Take the earliest train to see the sunrise. However, the weather wasn't that great, at least at the moment we departed. And it was really rainy, so I also think it would be very cloudy. It was very busy, and we just follow the flow and we go for it. And this here is our train coming in that will take us to the highest railway station in all of Taiwan. Well, finding a place to sit, <laughs> that was difficult, but at least all passengers were able to go on board and to go up on the mountain to watch the sunrise. We were not awake yet, and that's the least I could say for this moment when I recorded this part of the video. The train will take us to the station of Susan, what is the highest railway station in all of Taiwan, on 2451 meters above sea level. Right next to the station, there are lots of vendors where you can buy some foods, drinks, breakfast, but also coffee, what was very much appreciated. And some people were giving very passionate information about the whole sunrise and what to expect. However, with the weather we had, there wasn't much to see to be honest. However, at least I could say that I've been to the highest railway station in all of Taiwan. And something else that's pretty unique. About a month before we arrived here, this railway station reopened again after a three year rebuilding process. And the railway station itself looks really nice. However, at least at the moment of recording, this station was only being used for the trains to see the sunrise and not for any other trains if you want to go hiking for example. That's really a pity because then I would definitely go here and well, you know, just travel a little bit more around. This is a new station so it's also accessible although you need to look a little bit for the elevator. And some old people were doing some morning gymnastics at the level right above the platform. Anyway, I really like this railway station and they did a good job on this. It blends in really well with the environment and it seems like they are getting ready to host more trains that go to the Allison recreational area. We were just a bit unlucky with the weather, but hey, that can happen. Most likely, if you go here, you have better views from the mountain and you can see the sunrise. Just like at many other railway stations, numbers at the platform do indicate what carrots will be where at the platform, although you don't need a reservation for these trains. And because we were one of the first one, we had a seat on the way back. When we arrived in the recreational area, we went for some breakfast and right after that we went to sleep again. And after some more sleep we took the train again because we had an unlimited day ticket anyway. Well I'm not gonna do a train tour for these trains that will run at the highest part of the Alison Mountain Railway. These trains are relatively simple. We first took the train to Shenmu, what is a little bit into direction Xiai. And from there we made a nice hike. It's only 1.66 kilometers from Alison, but for now I just show you a montage of what we did from the train and also the hike.
even though we didn't do a big hike it was really nice and even with this cloudy weather it's still really beautiful I mean, you don't need sunshine to have great experience of the nature however we're not done with the trains yet at the Alison recreational area because within the recreational area you also find a train that's running up and down all day and basically this is the line that will also go to the highest railway station but then it won't go all the way obviously at this spot we noticed that the railway station is slightly bigger we were actually planning to walk back from here but the weather wasn't that good I also noticed this steam engine over here and as I noticed it was still cooling down so I think it just worked its way up as far as I know the tracks from the valley so from Chai to Alisan are completely finished at this moment and trains will be riding on the entire route somewhere in 2024 this comes including a lot of other changes as well anyway this station here felt a bit like a kind of depot as well and at the upper part there were some exhibitions and also something about relationship with other railway companies and the many railway companies that had do have other pretty scenic train routes as well this was mainly for railway companies within Europe and on some of them you can find trip reports on this YouTube channel as well. Obviously we are in Taiwan and over here you also find lots of monkeys. Although they ran a little bit away for the camera. We were really convinced that we would walk from here. It started to rain really bad so basically we went back to the railway station again and took a train back to the main station of Alisan. And even though I haven't filmed that much of our Alisan adventure apart from the trains and the transportation, it was really nice. Take in account that if you go here you're higher in the mountains and it cools down a lot at night. Time to go back to the Alisan transport station and this is also the spot where we arrived. I had noticed when we came back at the back that there's a free shuttle service to the Alison recreational area. And this here is the interior of the Alison transport station. There are some lockers for your luggage and apparently at the upper floors there are quite some other facilities, although I didn't went into there. The 7-Eleven, what is a convenience store? Yeah, another one. This is mainly the heart of the bus station. Over here there is a place where you can take a sit and wait for the bus and obviously some queues for the buses. One queue is for if you have a reserved seat and the other queue for non-reserved passengers. We were having a reserved bus but we took a bus earlier because we had some activities on the mountain later on that day. Obviously you find line maps for the buses, most buses go to Chai, but there's also one bus per day that goes to Sun Moon Lake. And if you want to charge your mobile devices you can do this. The luggage room at the lower section of the bus was extremely limited, but at least it's there. But well we just took our luggage in the bus, that was a bit easier. And it wasn't busy this time, but it was way more relaxed. Also the views from the bus are absolutely stunning. Before I show you that. Let me show you the route of the buses and this is slightly different. The buses will all go to Jai, apart from the bus that goes to Sun Moon Lake. And some of these buses will also go via Fancy Hall. Where the difference is, is that some of these buses do terminate at the Jai station and this is also where we started our journey and this is the station for the conventional trains and the Alison Railway. Some other buses go to the high speed railway station, what is not within the city of Chai, but just outside of the city of Chai. On busy days it can be really popular to go to Alisan, so taking these buses might be a kind of an adventure, even though you don't always need a reserved seat. However it is possible to reserve a seat on these buses, but this is extremely difficult and especially if you are a foreigner and don't speak Mandarin. Uh, I'm not going to explain this. I will make a video on the Bong Bong train as well, what is another forest railway line in Taiwan. And there I kind of explain my frustration when it comes to this. So stay tuned for on the channel for that video I would say. For now I will show you some views from the bus and we won't go all the way down to Jai yet. 
and I'll show you why in a bit. You can also travel with these buses if you use your easy card, what is a smart card for public transportation. But in that case, you obviously have no reserved seats. done with the transportation part of this video but we have something really cool at the end and that we're visiting a tea farm here uh, i'll tell you more about this with the use of a voiceover but for now let's continue with this video taiwan is a tea producing and especially tea drinking country even though it's not that famous for export you will find quite a lot of tea farms in taiwan and the alisan tea farms are pretty famous the Alisan mountain range is known for its high altitude tea plantations, cool temperatures and nutrition rich soil. And this all basically contributes to the unique flavor profile of the Alisan tea. And even though the other product is even less famous, you also find quite a lot of coffee farms here, but also in other areas of Taiwan. But this is only for local consumption, so not for export. Anyway, we were lucky enough to visit the tea farm of Lin Baba or Master Lin. And he is basically the one who's responsible for educating most of the tea farmers around the Arizon region. And one thing I can tell you, he knows a lot about tea and he's also very passionate about his product. He showed us around at his tea farm, but also in his shop and, well, the place where he burns the tea. Apart from just being a tea farmer, there's also a shop that he has with his wife, where you can obviously buy the tea, but also do some tea tasting. And this is exactly what we did as well. And this is also a great spot where you can buy some real local souvenirs from Taiwan. Because this kind of tea is pretty unique. The tea tasting was really nice as well and it took quite long and actually I really enjoyed it. Especially because the weather was pretty good when we were here. After some delicious tea we continued our way with an acquaintance by car to Xia'i. Where we stayed over for the night before we went back to Taipei again. Welcome back to Jai. This was a really interesting ride and there's so many things changing right now for the Alison Railway and I think this is for the good because I don't think it can be really improved. Um, the buses are okay, um, although I think I already mentioned in the video, I really recommend you to go, well, as long as possible at least on one way with the train, then the other way you can travel by bus. Um, what way it's up to you. Um, Anyway, I hope you liked this video or this has been a helpful video to you. If so, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more trip reports about more sustainable ways of transportation, then hit that subscribe button. Tomorrow morning, I'll be traveling back to Taipei again. Uh, and in that video, I'll be featuring the railway station of Jie, and I'll be traveling on one of the newest long distance trains you can find on the non-high-speed railway network here in Taiwan, or the EMU 3000 trains. Um, more on that in another video and you can find it probably in the description of this video or might be popping up on the top right of the screen right now. Anyway, thank you for watching and before we really end of this video, one last message. Once again, thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to this point in the video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, you really might consider to subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in other trip reports, you can find them on this channel and within the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map where you can find all videos as well.